What's up, gang? Carolina Jack Pot Time coming at you on uh, Tuesday morning. Got a few minutes here before I have to head into a uh, stop and um, thought I'd uh, talk a little bit on a uh, topic that's become forefront in the world of college football the past couple of days. Uh, the firing of Pat Fitzgerald at Northwestern as head coach. Uh, you know, I saw, I made a little short video on it last night, just kind of somewhat joking around. Um, but made no mistake about it. It's really not a joking matter. Um, and I've listened to a lot of people this morning on sports. That, that, that's the nice thing about having a job where you're, you're driving around a lot, stopping, making deliveries, going to stuff. You can still like kind of listen to and, and, and be in the know on what's going on uh, in the world of college football and with particular stories. So that's a cool thing. Anyway, you know, everybody, they're, they're pretty much saying one form or other of the same thing. This is awful. It's an awful look for the university. You know, it's, it's awful. You know, it's an awful look for him. Look, I, I'm going to sit here and tell you something. I um, had a dream. Well, I didn't have a dream, but when I was in elementary and middle school, my job, or my not job, what I wanted to be when I grew up was a, a sportscaster, specifically do radio play-by-play. Yeah, no, and unfortunately, I didn't put my best foot forward in uh, college and, you know, kind of screwed around and started working full time before I really needed to start working full time. And uh, those kind of dreams kind of passed me by. So since that's not going to happen for me, I, you know, feel like I can just get on and say, you know, what I want to on my channel. And you can disagree with it. You can agree with it. Um, it's perfectly fine. I'd like to hear down in the comment section below what you think about this situation but um i don't think that this guy was totally fired for uh, a lack of institutional control i think he was fired for losing football games and you know the thing about it is where the taffy part of society comes into play is that he is a beloved figure at Northwestern, okay? He's an alumnus. Not only is he an alumnus, he was a member of some of the best teams that they had there, specifically in 1995 and 1996 teams, which in 1995, Gary Barnett took them to the Rose Bowl for the first time since, like, the 1930s and 1996. I believe they went to the Citrus Bowl, had another great year. He was on those teams. He's been the coach there for 17 years, and he is a beloved figure. But he's had two terrible years in a row. He's had a lot of terrible years there. Now, he's had a few years where they won like 10 games. It's been a very um, Jekyll and Hyde type program with Northwestern. The only thing I could compare it to is like Auburn. Uh, they'll have a, a, a great year, then they'll fall off, and then they'll come back and have a great year. Uh, but it's it's been bad the past few so I think that uh, this the, the athletic director and, F and the president there are both fairly new, both been there less than a couple of years each. I feel like they wanted a change in the football program, and then when all this came up, they saw this as an easy way to get him out um, without having to have that difficult kind of conversation. That's the taffy part of society because they're scared. They want to hold him accountable because they're scared of holding him accountable because of the backlash from former players, from other alumni, and uh, just anybody else affiliated with the university that loved the guy. Whether or not he's a good football coach, I don't know. I mean, it. it I think that, yeah, he is a good coach. I think that he probably had a hard time getting the best players there to Northwestern just due to not only academic standards, but it's just not, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like a destination for a four or five star recruit. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I do I think that he should have gotten fired for his performance? I don't know. I'm not the one to make that call. But a, a lot of the things that I hear them talking about that coming out, that what went on, the, this so-called hazing and stuff, it's kind of weird. Some of it is. I mean, some of it's really strange. But a lot of us played high school football. Some of you may have even played college football that listen to the channel. I don't know. Um, but a, a large majority of us guys who listen to the channel 
played high school football. You know, there was all kinds of stuff going on there, you know, uh, slapping each other on the ass, you know, grabbing a damn butt cheek and running off with it. Uh, not running off with it, running off after you grabbed it. You couldn't run off with it. That would have kind of rendered uh, you a little bit useless, wouldn't it? Uh, snapping each other in the damn ass with the towel, hiding shit from hiding people's clothes so you were running around naked. All of these things nowadays could be considered sexual harassment. And now some of the stuff they were talking about was kind of weird. Um, I've heard something like, and I'm not making fun of this, but like, dudes standing in front of the shower i heard this on the zach smith show yesterday standing in front of the shower uh rotating and they're uh dingling flapping around so it was like the rubber part of the car wash and making the freshman walk in through there and get slapped with it first of all your your wee wee ain't touching me okay uh we that would not happen ain't no way that i'm walking through that i don't care if you kick me off the team you, you ain't doing all that okay uh, but I, I don't know who this is that was participating, who the who the participants, who the, who the car washers were. But I can tell you one thing: it wouldn't be Carol on the jackpot. My God, not with my button on a fur coat. <laughs> I'd be a touchless car wash. You know what I'm saying? But that's just strange. Uh, but that's 2023. I don't know how what how guys act today. Um, but from what I've understood, he is uh, fighting it. I'm sure he's probably got a lawyer, and it sounds like he's going to sue the university. Because first off, they suspend him for two weeks in July. Okay, what's two weeks in July? Ain't doing nothing anyway. Would have probably been on vacation anyway. They're suspending him, and then they come back a couple of days later when no new developments have come in this case, and they fire him. It, it, it's, and I think that that was either done, uh, you know, under pressure or under somebody saying, hey, you know, we can start over. And what do you think? And let me know down in the comment section below. Like I say, everybody that's reporting this story in the mainstream of media is rather cookie cutter with it. And they have to remain politically correct and they have to kind of be somewhat on the side of the so-called victims, which... I, this entire football team came forward and uh, is supporting him, but then they didn't. They say that you have former and current players who said yes, ha this hazing and all this stuff did go on. So it's a really confusing situation. So I'm sure I'll have somebody in the comment section tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about. Well, guess what? You don't know what you're talking about either because you don't know anything about the entire parts of the story. But it sounds like a convenient way to get rid of someone who you felt was underperforming without having to have the difficult, hey, you're fired, we're going to go in another direction conversation. Now they can also fire him. And and, and here's the other thing too, and I, I'm pretty sure this is the, this is the same thing because this is kind of what happened with Jeremy Pruitt at Tennessee. That he was fired with cause. So Tennessee didn't have to pay out his contract. So I'm sure that Northwestern will have to pay Fitzgerald's contract out. I'm, I'm assuming that's the way that works, that he's getting fired with calls. So um, they're not going to have to pay him however much they owe him. Uh, I'm sure uh, that they probably don't owe him as much as Tennessee owed Jeremy Pruitt. So Tennessee probably saved a lot more money. Shock, shock. They come out smelling like a rose. More about them later. I got a video coming up of you people later on. But... Um, I, I just closing with this. I uh, the little little video I made yesterday, joking about, uh, I, you know, I didn't really know that it would come to this, and I would come to think of this. I almost, and I said in the video that, um, so you got fired for lack of institutional control. I'm like, dang, you couldn't have fired from losing 20 games in two years. Uh, we had a Vol fan, Tristan Smith, who commented, "I can't wait until Tweaker Beamer gets fired." What in the world makes you think that he's getting fired anytime soon, dummy? It seems to me like your team is the one who has the long, long history of firing coaches every two or three years, dummy. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video, or you know, not that you enjoyed it. It's actually a serious topic, 
that it made you think a little bit. Let me know down in the comment section below what you think about Taffy Society. Let me know what you think about Pat Fitzgerald. You can let tell me I'm an idiot if you think I'm an idiot. Or you can say, hey, I kind of agree with you, man, if you uh, kind of agree with me. Anyway, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. I'll see you later. Appreciate it. Peace, and I'm out. Go Gamecocks, and uh, go Coach Beamer. I, 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 I hope your little tweaking ass don't get fired anytime soon.